he was a dancer, he was a, a, a singer, he was a musician, so many qualities together. He was a person of literature. So all these vast human qualities conglomerated in Krishna and he was always just, he always fight for justice. So, unless Krishna, Krishna conquers, unless Krishna says that now battle should start, definitely the opponent groups like Bhishma, Drona, they all respect Krishna as a, as, a, as, a, as a great person. So they would not attack or anything. So, Arjun said Krishna, Krishna being the charioteer of Arjun. Because uh, Durjudhan from Kaurabhu went to Krishna to ask help. And Arjun also went a little earlier. Durjudhan came a little later. So, Arjun asked Krishna to only Krishna, but Durjadhan was very happy to have his soldiers. Krishna also had very powerful soldiers. Or Sankshaptak. Sankshaptak. It's a big, giant, giant amount of uh, soldiers, you know, and they are very powerful. Each soldier is in, invincible. And that soldiers, big amount of soldiers were given to Durjadhan by Krishna. How strange. We cannot believe. The opponents are given his all, all soldiers and he is going to this group as a charioteer. And he says that I will not fight, I will also only drive your chariot. Eh? And Arjun said that, Sir, that is enough. That is enough. Because I will get your advice, I will get your blessing, I will get inspiration from you. And I alone is like thousand. No problem. So, at such a situation, uh, Arjun, firstly, uh, Durjadhan to his Guru Dronacharya, Guru was also a fighter in his group, Aurab group. He was describing that who are the soldiers because they were on a chariot and they were watching the whole army, entire army. So both the sides and they know each other. They know each other. It's not a foreign attack. It's not the foreign people came to attack. They are relations, mostly relations. So they watched each other and explained and then Arjun said to Krishna that Krishna take my chariot too in the middle of the whole the armies. The Aries, they are arid. So let me see with whom I am going to fight. Who are the people that I am going to fight? I want to have a scanning. I want to scan it. So Krishna did the same. And then after watching his opponents and he saw the most of the opponents were his dear relations. His own grandfather is standing against him. The grandfather who, who loved him, reared him on his lap, you know, gave him so much of love in childhood. And his teacher who taught him all sorts of archery, all sorts of warfare, Drona, his opponent standing there and his brother standing there and so many relations standing there so he suddenly got nervous he suddenly got nervous and said Krishna my head is reeling my body is trembling my bow is falling down from my hand and I don't find any good symptom it's all are very bad symptoms opposite symptoms contrary symptoms and I cannot bear it and so he sat down he said I will not fight because I don't want to enjoy throne, I don't want to enjoy kingdom. Fighting and killing my dearest relations. So that was a big riddle now for Krishna. He says that what is this? Huh? Arjun says that he won't fight because he's becoming sickly out of his nervousness, out of his compassion, you can say, all his infatuation. More than compassion, you would rather say infatuation. He says, Instead of killing my relation, why shall I have this kingdom? Why shall I have? Because if I have the kingdom and in the battle all our relations are killed, then what is the use of having it? Because people in this world want to share, share their happiness, share their miseries, eh? share their glory, share their victory, everything. They want to share with their friends, you know. Enjoying anything alone. And sharing with others, sometimes difference, great difference. You eat alone and you feel, you eat with many people. 
and with like-minded people. So, the law of the world is that you must have relations. <coughs> you must have relations, you must have friends, you must have like-minded people, huh? people favorable to you, and then share your feelings with them. So here, Arjun says that if we kill our all these people, both our people will also be killed, and those people will also be killed, and what is the use of this thing? What is the use of this thing? So his argument was like that. So, Krishna says that, no, Arjun, this is not right. This is not right. Uh, it's because this is a battle not between relations, but this is a battle between just and unjust, right and wrong. And a kingdom does not belong to relations alone. A kingdom doesn't belong to relations. A kingdom belongs to the public. The most important factor in a country is the public. Not your mountain, not your Lord Paramounts, wealthy people, rich people, this, that. No. Public. If there is no public, there is no government. There is no rich people. There is no doctors. There is no engineers. Nothing. It is a wrong psychology here. Even now, I see in the society, some group of people, some group of people who are privileged, they think that we are the society, we are everything. Whatever we do, the rest of the people have to follow it. But they forget that no king can exist without subject. Subject can exist. Subject can exist without a king. Subject can exist without a government. I have seen many like that. I have seen many like that. Nobody goes to the village. No government ever goes to the village. No government officer ever you know, visits the village. But the village administrates itself. Elderly people administrates. Everything is going well. They grow their food, they leave, they rear their children, everything. So that way, this is the wrong psychology. So Krishna says, this group of people whom you are calling your relations, they are actually exploiters. They are actually atrocities. Huh? They are despotic. People don't like them. People of the country, they don't like them. So it is your duty to bring the administration, bring the system into the right track. It doesn't matter whether somebody is your father-in-law or mother-in-law or brother-in-law or any in-law. It doesn't matter. It is, it is relative. Maybe in the past life uh, that was your enemy and now he is a father-in-law huh? in this lifetime. So it's a relative thing, but just justice, huh? honesty, justice, huh? right behavior, right thing. That is virtue, and this virtue is eternal thing, long thing. So you are fighting for virtue. You are going to fight for virtue. Everybody will die in this world, today or tomorrow. So, in this process, Krishna says to Arjun, when he is sad, depressed, melancholy and sat on the, on the chariot that I will not fight, rather I will beg rather than killing my relations. Huh? I don't want kingdom, I don't want anything. So, Krishna says that at such a crucial moment, at such a crucial moment, how you are overcome with such ignorance? How you are overcome with some, some cowardice? Huh? And this cowardice, this attitude that you have overcome with, a contrary attitude, it's not going to give you heaven. Neither is going to give you a victory on this earth. Either you must have victory on the earth, right here on the earth. Or you must die and reach heaven. Because this is a fight for justice. And a fight for justice, anybody dies, go to heaven. Anybody dies, goes to heaven. So, what a kind of thing. It is neither, it is anarji justam. Anarji justam means, it is worthy of anarja. Anarja means uneducated people, uncultured people. Now you see, interesting thing. 
there had been a big quabble, there had been big hue and cry in the name of Arian, Arjun. Arian huh? and non-Arian. I don't want, I don't want to uh, uh, deal into such things at this moment, you know, going to history, going to people who are wrongly fought and killed millions of people in the name of Arja and Anarja. But actually it's not a race. Arja is not a race. Arja is a standard of education of the time, of the Vedic time, a standard of education which if somebody mastered, as you become graduate in the modern time, they used to be Arja. And those who are not educated in that system, they were called Anarja. So here we can clearly find this in the Gita, that the kind of behavior that you are doing now at the moment, at this crucial moment, when you are prepared for fighting against your enemies, the biggest fight that the world might have ever seen, and you suddenly say that you won't fight and you are the leader of the whole community, whole fight, whole, whole group of people. So it is anarja. That means it doesn't show your cultured mind. It doesn't show your prompt mind, mindness, prompt mindness. Huh? You are falling off from your duty. So he says that Asuchananna Suchastan Pragabadam Sivashusha Gatasu Nagatasu Chanam Suchanti Pandita This is, I am uh, uttering 11 verse, 11 verse of the first chapter. Asuchananna Suchastan Pragabadam Sivashusha Gatasu Nagatasu Chanam Suchanti Pandita Asuchan Asuchan Anna Sucha Tam Pragabadam Asuchan Anna Sucha Asuchan means the people who are not worthy of lamenting, lamenting of, or lamenting on, those who are not worthy of lamenting on, you are lamenting. You are lamenting on people who are not worthy of lamenting. Like some justice whose son committed murder. Then the father is the justice for the case. The father cannot lament in the court. He cannot lament in the court saying, Oh my son, you have committed this. Why did you do this? Why you are giving so much of trouble to my soul? And so on and so forth. You cannot do that. You have to give the verdict. Right verdict. Huh? So, exactly the same way he says, These people who are disliked by people, disliked by common people, they are not doing right things. They have they have already done injustice to you. They have seized your kingdom by tricks. They have seized your kingdom by tricks. And you are lamenting on such people. They are not worthy of lamenting. Asuchan Anna, Asuchan, Asuchan, Anna Socha. Anna Socha means you are lamenting. Asuchan means those who are not worth lamenting. Tom, you, Pragga Badamsha Bhasasha. Then again, Pragga Badamsha Bhasasha. You are speaking like a wise person. Huh? Pragga means wisdom. Pragabhan. Pragabhadam. Badam means those wise people speaking wise things. Words of wisdom. So you are talking as if you are wise. Eh? But again you are lamenting. But. Gatasu nagatasu chanam suchanti pandita. Those who are gone from this world, dead, or those who are about to die or will die, or somebody is lost. So whether dead or not dead, on no one, a pandit. A man of wisdom, a man of enlightenment, on none of them lament. So Pandit doesn't lament. Huh? You are lamenting on people who are not worth lamenting and then you are talking like a wise person, hypocritical. But those who are enlightened people, they neither lament on living or nor lament on dead. Mm.